Hey there weavers, this is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. Today we finally get to start weaving the placemats in our log cabin uh, pattern. Now log cabin is a two shaft plain weave structure that is also called color and weave. And that's because it's threaded in a alternating light and dark structure. And when you uh, change the warp from dark light to light dark, and then you change the weft from dark light to light dark, the orientation of the uh, apparent stripes changes also. So it's pretty cool to see happen, and um, I will show you the weaving and also kind of explain what's going on in the color and weave when you change those um, shafts. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we have the warp uh, lashed on and tensioned, and now I'm going to put in a few picks of waste yarn to spread the warp out. And I like to use a wool yarn, uh, especially if you're using a mercerized yarn because the wool has a little bit of tooth to it and will help spread it out. So I'm going to lay this in in three picks. The first pick I'm going to put so that it is roughly straight across. I'm not going to beat it. I will change my shad to the shaft two. We will put the second pick in. This one will go at an angle like that. So it's going up like that. And then we again will not beat it. And I'm not going to pull it tight over here. It's fine if there's a loop. I don't care. Then we're going to change sheds again and we will put a third pick in and this one will again go roughly straight across. And I'm not going to pull it tight. I'm just going to let it float out there. Um, I don't want to draw in the selvage. So with those three picks in, I'm now going to close my shed. So we're going to go ahead and pull this in. And look how nicely that spread that warp. Now you can see that I've got my selvage threads are still um, out here they're not being drawn in so I'm going to go ahead and put in oh let's put in another three picks just to hold everything stable um, so we're going to go ahead and do the shed and on these next few picks we'll we're not going to pull the salvage tight. We don't want to do that, but I am going to snug it up and then I'm going to uh, beat and change my shed. And we'll go ahead and do um, two more. We're going to be weaving with two shuttles. Um, and just like with the warp, we are going to alternate um, the shuttles between dark and light. And then when we get to uh, 12 picks, we will switch going from dark light, dark light. We'll switch that and then go light, dark, light, dark. And just like with the warp, we will double up if it uh, does if it's dark light dark light we'll end on a dark and then we'll have uh, the next one be 
light dark light dark so let's go ahead and do that all right so we're going to go ahead and start with dark and my shuttles are a bit overkill on this project but um because i'm going to be weaving just with these two colors for four placemats i didn't want to have to keep winding bobbins um, so we're using the big shuttles so because this is three two cotton I am going to use the method of splitting the plies when I tuck my tails. And this will reduce the bulk um, in this spot. So as I've shown in previous videos, uh, we come back, well this would be an inch, so I'm going to come back just um, little less than an inch. I'm going to unply this and because this is um, two plies we're just going to uh, split that down the middle. We're going to put one of those plies back through the same shed. Then we're going to go around the outer um, thread and we're going to come back through the same shed and I like to come to one thread beyond where I took it out. So I'll go ahead and beat that in and then we can change our shed. And then this one and this little tail will get cut off. Now on the light color, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to beat. Pull this back. untwist the plies and I'm just using a um, large uh, tapestry needle to pull those plies apart just makes it a little bit easier um, back through the shed and we'll go around the outside thread back through the same shed and beat it. All right. So now we're going to just weave. Uh, so green, the dark green is going to be on shaft one. The light green will be on shaft two. And um, I want to be sure to go around um, the selvage thread. And now on this one, I'm going to make sure that these cross um, appropriately so that um, I'm going over I'm going to dive the dip or jump the bump so because the green thread is diving I'm going to go under the green thread and that will lock it into place And 
again. We are diving down. So I'm going to just make sure that that goes under the green thread. Oops, didn't change my shed. We're going to continue this um, for, and I keep forgetting to change. See, I'm used to working on a floor loom where my feet are doing the work, and that is not happening here. Um, so I'm going to continue this until I have um, 20 repeats. Um, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so I have gotten the first uh, repeat uh, in here. And you'll notice I've got the uh, zinger threads out here on these sides and I'm going to uh, put a zinger a red zinger in here um, on either end of the placemat also so we're to the point where normally I would put in two um, dark picks at this point uh, to switch to the block changing direction but because this is where we want the red. We're just going to put in one pick of the red in place of one of those dark threads. So we're going to um, put in a dark and then a red. So put that off to the side. So now we're on shaft two. We're going to put in our red. And just like we did with the um, green and the uh, white over here, we're going to split the plies to tuck the tails. Unfortunately, this is just one pick, so we're going to have to do that on both ends. So I'll go ahead and beat that in, and then I will cut that off, set that off to the side, and now we will pull this out, and this is time consuming um, to do, but we're not tucking that many tails, so um, it's not, it's not too bad, and it makes for a really nice product. All right, All right so now we're going to start with our light. So now shaft one is going to be the light colored uh, weft and shaft two will be the dark colored weft. And this is where you will see that it switches directions.
So you can see how these switched from vertical stripes here to horizontal stripes here. All right, so that is 10. So now I'm going to, um, let's see, my pattern says, um, we're going light, dark. Uh, so now the next, my next pick is going to be um, dark. And this will switch me back to going um, horizontal here and vertical, or <laughs> vertical here and horizontal here. Um, I am going to advance my work. And so you can see how I am getting a really cool pattern with just two shafts and using colors to basically create the pattern. Um, so you would think that this is uh, more complicated. Uh, you would think that you would need more shafts to create something um, that looks this complicated, but you don't. This is just plain wave. So I've been weaving along here and I thought it might be helpful to take a close up look at just why this structure works. So it's plain weave, two shafts, every other thread goes um, up or down. The way that it creates the stripes is when you thread every other thread um, dark and light and then you weave every other thread dark and light. What happens on the picks where the white threads are raised and the white thread comes through, it creates a line. So you can see how the dark threads are in the background and are being covered for the most part by the white thread. Now over here where you have the dark threads are raised and a white thread is being um, thrown it's creating vertical lines because what you're seeing is the white and white interaction and the white is going under the dark colors. So you get a vertical line of dark and a vertical line of what appears to be well, what appears to be a vertical line of light. So that is why the structure works. When I go to switch from 
doing light, dark, light, dark. Right now I have the number one shed being woven with a light pick. If I were to weave a number two shed with a light pick, we'll do that here. Now my light threads are being raised over here instead of my dark threads. So when we have a light threads being raised over here, we get a horizontal light um, line and a vertical dark line or vertical lines of white light and dark. But if I were to raise these now, this light pick will create a horizontal line. So that's how they switch from uh, vertical lines to horizontal lines when you switch which shaft is being raised for which pick color. So I hope that makes sense. Um, we're just going to go ahead and continue weaving on. And uh, I believe this might be the last, um, this might be the last placemat in the warp. So then we'll go ahead and take them off and finish them and I'll show you the end product. Okay, so we finished up weaving the log cabin placemats and uh, I washed them, cut them apart, hemmed them, and I got four placemats that are 13 inches wide and about 18 inches long and they turned out really cute. I love how the red uh, thread kind of outlines the um, entire placemat. And then I had a little bit of uh, warp left over, so I re-threaded a couple of the dark green warp threads with the red, and I made these cute little mug rugs. So they're about four and a half inches square and fringed on all four sides. And they also have the red um, zinger thread that outlines them. So that was just a nice little bonus to have. Um, I think I'll go ahead and put these in my Etsy shop. So if you would like a 10% discount on them, uh, there's a code in the description and you can go over and uh, purchase these. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, join, tell all your friends about my channel. Um, also, if you are interested in where I got this great shirt, um, these are my new t-shirts that I have available. Um, if you go to the YouTube store, you can see them. Um, this is one of them. They're really cute. Uh, I've got also a uh, sweatshirt, um, like a pullover hoodie that has uh, the big logo on the back and uh, the small logo in the front. So uh, you can go and check those out. Thanks for watching my channel and happy weaving.